In the previous tutorial, we created a web service called the product catalog service by annotating this class with the add web service annotation. And uh, this class had a method called get product categories, which returned a hard coded list of categories. Now, I want to make a few changes to this code. The first change that I want to do is to remove this logic from this class and put it into a business service class. And I want to make this web service class, make a call to the business service class and then get the, get the values instead of having the code here directly. Now, why would I want to do that? The reason is in a real world application, there are different ways in which you want the users to use the application, right? So there could be an MVC layer so that the users can use um, the application in their browsers as a web application. And it could also be exposed as a web service so that different other applications can send SOAP requests and consume the same data. So the logic that produces the data is the same, but the ways in which it's consumed could be different. So what you'd want to do is to have a consolidated business service, which contains all the logic, and then the actual, you know, the other layer, which is the web service layer, will actually make a call to the business service. And if there's an MVC layer, the MVC layer also makes a call to the same business service. So having a separate business service helps us do that. So I'm going to remove this and put it into a business service. And this class is going to make a call to the business service. So it's going to be something like this. So I'm going to create a product service. And then that product service will have a get product categories. And then our web service class is simply going to make a call to that service and get the values. Okay. Now let me go ahead and create a business service called product service. So I'm going to create a new Java class. I'm going to create a package called business. And then I'm going to call this products of a simple and finish, right? So this class is going to contain all the logic and our web service class is just going to make a call like this to get the values. Now in this class, I'm going to add the same method, get product categories, which does the same thing. I'm going to fix the imports here, which does the same thing, but then the logic is now in this class. Okay. And over here, I'm going to create a new instance of the products of a simple. And then this method is just going to make a call to that instance. Okay. So this is exactly the same as what was happening before, but what's happening now is this logic is now in the products of a simple class. Let me save these two. Okay. So I want to add a couple more, um, web service operations to this web service. So one, uh, you know, one feature that I want to add is for people to submit the category name. Right, so the request will contain the category name, and then the response will contain the products in that category. So you say, uh, "Give me all the products with the category books," and then it should return the list of books. And uh, give me all the products with category movies or music; it should return the list of movies or music. So I'm gonna again hard code some values over here. So I'm gonna add uh, three array lists: a list of books, a list of music, and a list of movies. And I'm going to initialize it when the class initializes, right? So this is just a hard coded way in a real world application. It would probably read from a database or something like that. So now I'm going to create a constructor, a product service simple constructor. And here I'm going to initialize some set of uh, books, music, and uh, movies. So I'm going to initialize the book list with three books here. I'm going to initialize the list of mu music with three music albums. And then I'm going to initialize a list of movies with three movies, okay? And uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a method called get products, and it takes an argument as the categories. So I'm gonna have a method like this, a get products, which returns a list of strings, and it accepts a category. And I'm gonna do a switch, and based on the category itself, if it's books, music, or movies, I'm just returning the corresponding, uh, you know, list. So I'm going to, if it's books, I'm returning a book list. If it's music, the music list, and if movies, the movie list. And if it's none of them, I return null. Okay. So this is, uh, you know, a new business service method that I've added. And now I want to expose this business service also as a web service. So all I need to do here is to create a new method, right? Like we discussed before, every public method in this 
uh, class is going to be exposed as a web service operation. So all I need to do here is to create a method like this, right? I return, you know, I have a get products, which takes in a category. And then all it does is it just returns the response, you know, it just returns the result of the business service, right? So this is all I need to do. Of course, I could call this as at web method, but it's not really required, right? Any public is always going to be exposed as a web method. Okay, so let's test this out. I'm going to deploy this on the server. I'll say run as run on server. And uh, of course, verify. That the application is deployed fine. And then I'm going to go to the admin console. And here to the applications, same as before. I have test mart here. And if I view the endpoint, there's still going to be just one endpoint, but there should be two operations. Now, if I go to the tester link, now you see our uh, get products operation is also over here. And like I said, if it's an operation that requires an input, the tester page is going to show us a text box, right? So if I do a get product categories, it's going to return books, music, and movies. But let's say now I want to see all the books, right? I just type it here and then make a call. So it's going to return me the list of books. But then what's actually happening is it's making a SOAP request and it's passing the value that I entered in the text box. And then this is the SOAP response, right? So this works just as we expect. I'm going to try music also. And there you go. It works as we expect. So this is, you know, an example of taking an input input argument. We don't really have to do anything, right? So it just knows that this um, this web service operation requires an input argument. And how does it know that? It knows that because the method in the class annotated with that web service takes in an input argument. So it knows that the web service operation also needs this input argument. So it uh, the tester automatically provides a text box and then the visual will automatically have the values for, you know, indicating that this needs an input argument. Okay, so I'm gonna add one more method here. I'm gonna create uh, an add method this time, right? I want to add uh, a value. I wanna add a product into this product list, right? So let's say I take in two parameters. One parameter is the category and one parameter is the actual product name, right? So I, I pass in say books and I give in a book name, then it should add to this book list, right? If I pass in music as a category and give it an album name, it should add to the music list, right? So I'm gonna implement that here. So I write a method called add product, takes in the category and also the product name and it ret returns a Boolean, which is like true if it's successful. And um, I'm gonna have the switch again, right? If it's books, then I add it to the book list. If it's music, I add it to the music list. And if it's movies, I add it to the movie list. And then if it's the default, if it's none of those three categories, it just returns false, but otherwise it returns true. Okay. Now again, back to the product catalog. Now I need to write a method here, which uses the business service so that it's exposed as a web service. And as you can imagine, this method is also pretty straightforward. It just has an add product, takes in these two parameters and it just blindly sends it to the business service and then takes the response and returns it back. Okay, so these three are now the three web methods. Of course, you can annotate it if you want. Let me go ahead and annotate it anyway, but this is not required. Okay, now let's deploy this one more time. Run on server. Okay, so this page indicates that the deployment is successful. I'm going to go back to the applications, view endpoint, and I'm going to go to the tester link directly. And if you notice, now there are three operations. There are three different methods. 
So again, I can do a get product categories and return the categories. And uh, let me get all the books. Okay, it returns all the books. Now I'm gonna add a book. Okay, so I'm gonna say the category is books. And I wanna add, uh, let's say, a Java Brains book. So I click add product. Now it returns true. So it's actually added this value. Now what happens if I retrieve the books? If I retrieve the books, notice that the Java Brains book has also been added to the list. Okay. Now this tells us something. And what does it tell us? It tells us that this initialization happens only once, right? So that's because it's the same instance of the product catalog, which is used for every call. So no matter how many web service calls you make, it's actually calling methods of the same product catalog instance, because if there were different instances, every time you do an add, and then you make a retrieve again, if it were a new instance, you would not see the value that you've added. So I added a Java Brains book, and then when I retrieved the list of books, it was still there, which means that it's actually working on the same instance, okay? So I'm not gonna discuss the life cycle of this class at this point of time. It's uh, it's kind of uh, you know a topic for later, but just keep this in the back of your mind, right? Every web service call you make is actually working on the same instance in this case. Okay, so this is kind of, we, we've, uh, we've covered a few methods here. We've you know, covered a retrieve method. We've also covered a write method, right? We were able to make uh, an addition to the existing list, right? So we have covered these two kinds of methods. Uh, and now at this point of time, you might be wondering if everything is so simple, right? If everything is happening just because of this one annotation, what's the big deal about web services? What else is there to learn? Well, there are a lot of things you'll have to learn which are kind of taken care of by default. This is for a very simplistic scenario. This is if, if you're doing something very basic, this would work, but then there are a whole lot of scenarios where just annotating at web service would not work for web services. So we're gonna take a look at some of these scenarios in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.